Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're doing the Accelerated European Outlook for today's second video. So as always on a Tuesday, or as normal, normally on a Tuesday, um, we're having a look at the weather for the next 30 days uh, across Europe. And we'll look at weeks 5 and 6 as well. Um, so I shall get on that for you in a second. Just say that first. The video says, I think said UK weather forecast. We've got the first... Um, Proper forecast for Christmas coming up after this video. The 11th installment of the Christmas countdown is going to be our first sort of detailed look at the entire uh, Christmas week. So uh, that's going to be quite interesting uh, video, an actual forecast for the Christmas week. There were still early days on that, though, and it's subject to change. Um, and then it'll all be rounded off with a 10 to 14 day later on uh, this afternoon. Please like, share, and subscribe on all of today's videos and content. Thanks so much for doing that. This will be the final extended European outlook of the uh, year. We'll be extending, uh, we'll be resting, I should say, the uh, extended European outlook over Christmas week so next Tuesday it's Christmas Eve week after that New Year's Eve so uh, the extended European outlook will be back like three weeks today I think um, right thanks to ECMDF.int for supplying the charts of the data thank you so much EC let's have a look then we're going to start uh, with the weak word that means sea level pressure anomaly uh, across Europe and we see plenty of low pressure in across northern Europe anyway high pressure is out in the Atlantic and the jet stream and uh, wind flow is doing something a little bit like that. So, uh, Western Europe looking relatively mild and protected by the area of high pressure. Bring the air in from off the Atlantic. But Northern Europe, especially Northeast Europe, could be uh, colder. Did I say the, the date fish is pertains from the 16th, 23rd of December, by the way. Right, 500 millibar high tonne from the Arctic of the North Pole view down. Again, plenty of low pressure in the North Atlantic. Going into northern Europe, high pressure across southern and southwestern parts of Europe. Winds coming in from a westerly direction, a little bit like that. So a mild week to come across most parts of the Europe in the weekend with above average temperature. It's very cold across Arctic portions of, uh, of um, Norway, though, and also Sweden and Finland. So up in the extreme north of Europe, we have winter really entrenched and you know <laughs> that's a cold place anyway at this time of the year so like in arctic portions of finland um sweden up to lapland i suppose um we're looking at a temperature only there like six to ten degrees below average i think maybe even going to 10 degrees uh below average in what is a very cold area at this time of year anyway so extremely cold in the extreme north of europe but that's the exception to the rule most places actually have above average temperatures in the uh, week ahead, and especially so through um, the central region. So anywhere from about the low countries, Denmark and southern uh, Norway and Sweden, right the way over towards Ukraine, Belarus and the far southwest of Russia, seeing uh, the temperatures only there between 3 and 6 degrees Above average, very mild. Western Europe is mild than average as well. Not quite to the same extent. So, northern France in towards the UK and Ireland. Seeing the temperature anomaly there around 1 to 3 degrees above average. Close north for southern France, northern parts of Spain. And then into the Mediterranean, uh, we're close to average through there as well. We've got Greece and uh, those sort of areas up to the Balkans. Coming out near north, slightly above average in the weekend. So it's generally mild seeing away from the extreme northern portion of Europe. Also, the Baltic Sea states of Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, seeing uh, the temperature only there, about 3 to 6 degrees above average, very mild. Temperature wise, looks pretty unsettled in most areas as well. So southern Europe generally uh, drier than normal, particularly through the central western bowl of the Mediterranean, back to Spain and Portugal. Going further northwards, though, we see above average rainfall from France, Ireland and the UK in west, all the way over to the far northeast of Europe in the east and the northeast. Large portions of Scandinavia, Nordic regions coming out with above average precipitation as well. Some of that will be rain, I suppose, down in the south, away from mountainous areas. But go further north to that boundary area with the cold, and there I would imagine 
imagine on very appreciable and large amounts of snow are likely through, again, central parts of uh, Norway, central parts of Sweden, and into uh, northern parts of Finland as well. And then when we get into the Arctic portions, of course, it becomes drier, where it is a bitterly cold. Um, OK, so that's uh, week one done. Let's have a look at week two, which is going to be Christmas week, 23rd of December to the 30th. And we find that we've got high pressure again, just to the west and the southwest of the UK, Ireland and France, keeping much of Western Europe again protected by that region. Low pressure is in across the extreme northern portion of Europe, and again we bring the wind flow and the jet stream in from that northwesterly direction, cold air digging into the far north of uh, Europe there. Precipitation wise, uh, again, we see from Christmas week we've got this ridge from the Atlantic into western parts of Europe. That can keep being pretty mild. Low pressure up here could pull some colder air out of Greenland and um, um, you know, the Arctic into the far north of Europe. But I think the real kind of probably with this trough of low pressure actually in the southeastern corner. So that's like the Balkans around the Adriatic going southwards towards Greece and Turkey. Maybe a white Christmas in Greece again. We'll see. <laughs> temperature anomaly. It showed that the mildest temperature over Christmas wing revert back towards the UK and Ireland um, and also southwestern parts of Norway as well where we have the temperature on around 3 to 6 degrees above average. But it is generally a very mild scene across most parts of Europe, to be honest. So, you know, the vast majority of Europe having above average temperatures through Christmas. Um, we've only got, like, Portugal, western parts of Spain, looking a little bit cooler. And especially, again, in the southeast corner. So, Italy, over the Asiatic, into, into the Balkans, and then going southwards towards Greece, possibly into parts of Turkey, although Turkey also looks relatively mild, I have to say there. Um, but, uh, you know, it's in that extreme southeast corner, but we have the risk of, uh, of colder weather seemingly through the course of this Christmas. Otherwise, it's a mild scene uh, across both parts of Europe. Remember, these are anomalies for average, so, you know, both sea states will probably still be quite chilly, even if the temperature on is around 1 to 3 degrees above average. Finland, Sweden, uh, especially in central northern areas, still going to be quite cold, uh, even with above average temperature anomalies to average. Right, well, precipitation-wise, relatively dry Again, three western parts of Europe protected by that area of high pressure. So Spain, Portugal, much of France, Ireland and the UK looking drier than normal. Just the far north of Scotland a little bit wetter. Most parts of the Mediterranean are looking uh, pretty dry as well. What are you doing with your line gap? <laughs> Get rid of that. So most parts of the Mediterranean looking pretty dry as well. Back to Italy from Spain. Um, again, we do see wetter conditions in the southeastern corner. So Greece, Turkey, could be some big showers of birds all being triggered by those cooler or colder temperature and going further northwards you know, towards Romania for example in towards the uh into the Balkans we might start seeing an increase in risk of some snow through there wetter than average conditions from Germany back towards Ukraine um probably a mix of rain snow depending on elevation and then we go further north of that and we have uh, wetter than average conditions in towards Norway or parts of Sweden Finland a lot of that's going to be snow especially Southern regions a bit drier down towards the south of uh, Sweden, maybe. Week three will be the 30th of December, 6th of January. Now, this is a bit of a change. We find some high pressure there in the Atlantic moving up towards Greenland and low pressure with a trough into the north of Europe. That could bring colder air in for the north, into the north and the western portion of Europe. It looks as though we still have relatively highish pressure, though, down across southern parts of Europe. So one of the temperature, the 500 millibar heights, Jim, what are you on about, Gaff? Um, again, trough of low pressure in across the north of Europe, high pressure out in the Atlantic. That could start to switch the wind around to a colder northerly 
into the north and the west of Europe then. Having said that, the temperature obviously <laughs> still holding up. So uh, colder than average in the extreme northern portion of Europe again and towards Scandinavia and, uh, well, Sweden, Finland uh, and um, also Norway. Slightly cold average in those northern regions. That extends through the Norwegian Sea back towards Greenland and Iceland. Legacy of the Christmas cold snap to the south and the east of the Black Sea. Otherwise, most areas are still looking milder than normal, though, actually, with that uh, temperature anomaly across Europe. Precipitation-wise, so um, above average precipitation through these uh, central and northern regions. To me, that looks like it should be turning cold, I have to say, across um, northern and western Europe. It looks like the high pressure is out in the Atlantic, going up towards Greenland. Low pressure is through here. That should the wind into a northerly or a northeasterly. Um, so a little bit unsure about the temperature anomaly there, but uh, above average precipitation to much of central northern um, Europe, anywhere from France going up towards uh, Russia and then back to Ireland and the UK, all those areas with above average precipitation. If it's cold enough, that will fall as snow. The complication is these dry conditions down across the southern parts of Europe, though, because it looks like high pressure still relatively high across southern Europe, so drier average conditions through the Mediterranean for example, that could be holding up the, the cold northerly uh, airstream. Uh, right, week four is the 6th to the 13th of January. Well, then we go back to milder weather anyway, as high pressure slips back southwards again, and that will bring the wind back around from the west and from the southwest. 500 millibar heights looking like that, so higher pressure through here, lower pressure is up there, and winds coming up from west southwest like that. Uh, temperature anomaly is above average in most parts of Europe. We're a long way out now, though, remember. And precipitation wise, we're back to like drier conditions through these western southwestern air, a bit wetter in the north east. Right, well, that's your 30 day look ahead done. Let's just go for weeks five and six data before we go. So, week five will be the 13th to the 20th of January. Now, so that one has low pressure up here. Higher pressure is out there. Winds coming in generally from westerly direction. 500 millibar height should confirm that. Yes, we do. Temperature orange should still be pretty mild. Yes, we are. And precipitation anomalies. Wetter again in the north. Drier in the southwest. And then week 6 will be the 20th, 27th of January. Very weak signal by this point. But still, we have that high pressure from the Azores in the Atlantic. So that will fundamentally keep the wind in from the west most likely uh the 500 millibar height anomaly low pressure up there high pressure through there certainly through western europe it implies uh, a westerly flow maintained temperature is continuing to be above average on the mild side and uh, no particular signal for precipitation so there's a bit of a hint, maybe of a cold snap around the new year, I think, there, into early January. Quite temporary, though. And then we're back to milder conditions as well, uh, again. But for that, though, looks generally mild up to Christmas and over Christmas through many parts of uh, Europe. So, um, you know, it's going to be a mild uh, Christmas by the look of it there. Right, well, that is your final 30-day uh, extended European outlook of the year. So, as I say, there won't be a extended European outlook next week as it's Christmas Eve week after that is New Year's Eve. So, over Christmas, you know, all the additions and add-ons tend to get scaled back a little bit. This video, therefore, will be back. Uh, I think it will be, like, three weeks today, which I think will be the 7th of January. So, uh, we'll see, you know, how things are looking uh, then. Of course, we will keep um, regular videos going, though, over Christmas period. I won't, be, <laughs> I won't be disappearing over Christmas. Don't worry, just getting back some of these uh, add-ons. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to have a detailed Christmas forecast for you, the first sort of stab at Christmas um, will be coming up very shortly after this video. And then there's a 10 to 14 day on the way later on as well. So uh, I'll see you a little bit later on for the rest of today's content. For this one, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing to ECM, JF.INT.
for supply of the charts and the data, by the way. Oh, and by the way, we probably will have another look at this video, uh, this uh, model, though, at the end of the week. I think that'll be on Saturday morning. Uh, we'll do a UK and Ireland focus video with this model. So you haven't seen the last of this um, for the year yet. Okay, well, we'll end it there. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Accenture European Outlook for this one. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.